Good morning, Year 5. Welcome to your Wednesday Maths lesson, middle of the week. We are going to, as we always do, start with our flashback for mental maths questions, not forgetting to try and tell the time using the clock face. Uh, give yourself around 30 seconds, pause the video now. Question 1. Change 18 fifths to a mixed number. So how many full holes can I make if each hole is, is made up of 5 fifths? I can make three full holes, which is using 15 of my fifths. If I start with 18 fifths, I have three fifths remaining. Three and three fifths is the mixed number fraction equivalent to the improper fraction, 18 fifths. Question two, complete 15 twentieths equals something quarters. I've divided my 20 by 5 to get to 4, so I divide my 15 by 5 to give me the value for my numerator. The answer is 3 quarters. Question 3. Work out 3,157 multiplied by 4. Again, I'm quite short for space. I'm just going to write the answer in. You will have probably used the column method. 12,628. Finally, before we go on to the clock face, add together 6,483 and 1,999. Because this value is very near 2,000, I'm going to add 2,000 to this number mentally in my head. And because I added one more extra than I needed to, subtract that one from the answer that I got in my head. So adding 2,000 to this number would give me 8,484, so 83. Subtracting the one from that would give me an answer of um, 8,482. The time on the clock face there is 11 minutes past 8. Today's lesson, then, we are going to have a look at reflection, reflecting shapes, which is, again, something that we haven't done um, so far this year, so it is brand new learning to us, um, and it's something that hopefully you will be able to pick up and then have a go at practising using the questions that go alongside this lesson. So let's pull up an example question. This is actually going to be the first example that you get on your worksheet this morning. When I'm looking at reflecting shapes, we would maybe, in years gone by, have used mirrors to do this, or maybe using um, mirrors to help us reflect. But um, as we don't have those available at the moment, we are going to just have a go at using uh, another skill that we can, um, we can apply that will help us reflect shapes. Um, nice and successfully on the grids that we have um, on the sheet. So the first thing you need to do, whenever you get a shape that you are reflecting, is to label the vertex. So label all the vertex that you have. Remember we said a vertex? We said this yesterday that was where two sides meet. So a vertex, you can label them A, B, C and D, or one, two, three, and four, whatever you want to do, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to do A, B, C, and D. Once I've got my four vertex labelled, you are going to investigate and look where the reflection line or the mirror line is. This shape here, which is a rectangle, before we reflect it, is referred to an object. So we call this the object. Once we've reflected it in the mirror line or the reflection line, we call what we then have an image. That's the two terms you need to be familiar with. Object, before reflection, image, after reflection. Now, to reflect this shape nice and successfully, you are going to be working from the mirror line, which on your worksheets today is, is shown using a dotted red line. So if I want to put where A would appear on this side of my um, 
reflection line I've got to work from a reflection line I think oh, how many places to the left did I go to get to A? I jumped one place, two places. So to reflect it to go the other way, I would need to jump two places and label it A like so. B is sat right, the vertex B is sat on the mirror line. So my reflection would also be the same. It would also sit right there on the mirror line. C, I jumped two places to the left for C, so I would jump two places to the right to plot my reflection. And again, like B, D would appear on the mirror line like so. Once you've reflected all of your points, hopefully you've got some kind of ruler or a straight edge or something that you can draw straight lines with at home rather than drawing freehand. Um, you would join all of your vertex or your vertices up, your vertex is up, and you would end up with a reflected shape like so, on the mirror line like that. So just to recap, first thing, identify where your mirror line is because that's really important. Second thing, label the vertexes of the shape that you have interviewed. Some of them today will be um, rectangles or squares. Other than other ones might be a bit more tricky. But the same rule applies. You, you label all of your vertexes up, either with numbers or letters, and then you work from the reflection line to reflect each point individually. So you do A, then you do B, then C, then D, and that's however it might be. Before you um, move them, or before you join them all up, make sure you're doing it with a straight edge. Um, you have what we call an object, but now we have reflected the shape, we have something called an image, object image. So for the first few examples today, and you might want to pause the video in a moment and have a go at it, the shapes of the, the first object, using the correct terminology, is sat on the mirror line. So you'll always have the shape kind of touching, because it'll always touch on the mirror line. You will, though, after you've done that, move on to shapes like this, which are not on the mirror line. But the same principle applies. Okay, so you're going to label each vertex A, B, C and D. The only difference this time is that actually B and D are not sat on the mirror line. So you will have to do whatever you did to get left to get to the, the shape from the mirror line here. You'll have to do the opposite to get to the shape on the, on the right hand side, if that makes sense. I'll show you. So A, from the mirror line, I jumped one, two, three to the left. So to reflect that, I would jump one, two, three to the right and label A like so. B, I jumped one to the left, so I will jump one to the right for um, B. C, three to the left again, so it would be three to the right, one, two, three. And then D, one to the left, so one to the right like so. Once you have plotted the four vertexes of your um, image, you will then draw the lines or draw the draw the lines with a ruler or a straight edge to connect all of these. So let's pull that in to show what it would look like. There we go. Object, image, reflecting. Two examples there, one on the mirror line, the second one not on the mirror line. So you'll start with some on the mirror line on your worksheet, and then you'll move on to some where you've got to move all of the vertices um, or all the vertexes um, around. Um, starting with shapes, then going on to looking at um, different um, kind of shapes and different objects to, to reflect. I'll leave it there with you now for you to have a go on the worksheet. Um, there are some tricky questions at the end, but again, it's using the same logic of identifying the mirror line, using your labeling of the of the of the vertexes to to help you and uh, to help you reflect it across, and then drawing your final um, shape, which we refer to as an image, using a ruler to join the points up. Have a go the worksheet that goes with this lesson 
and let's see how you, how you 